Now we're going to take a look at these harmonic oscillator wave functions in some MATLAB animations. So just as before, I'm going to have some coefficient vector c, which is going to represent the coefficients of all the eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator. And the other parameters I'm going to have are k, the force constant, mu, the reduced mass, and then this last parameter just puts it in a convenient time scale for us to watch. So these are all just pretty much arbitrary units. They only mean things relative to each other. But let's go ahead and take a look. So if we have just 100% in the n equals 0 state of the wave function is just psi 0. If we look at that plot with a spring constant here of 10, reduced mass of 1. Here I have plotted <coughs> the real and imaginary parts of the wave function over time in the blue and green. I forget which one is which, doesn't really matter which is which. The point is that psi star psi, the real squared plus imaginary squared, gives us this probability density in red. And I also have plotted in blue the potential um, 1 half kx squared, which is just some uh, arbitrary relative potential just to show us uh, what this uh, parabolic shape looks like. So as you can see, this is a stationary state. We've got our Gaussian here, and the Hermite polynomial here is just a constant. It's 1 and normalized so that the integral of this probability density over all space is going to be 1 as well. And we see um, the energy is going to determine how fast these uh, imaginary and real parts oscillate back and forth in time and as we go up to higher and higher states we'll see we're getting a higher energy and these will be oscillating faster. So this is our ground state which is just a simple Gaussian centered at the minimum of the potential energy well. So let's go to n equals 1, the second eigenfunction. And now we have two peaks and that's because we have a wave function which is a Gaussian times a Hermite polynomial which is linear so it's going to be positive on this region, negative on this region. That's why you see these two peaks going up and down, the imaginary, the imaginary and real part following each other. You notice if we calculated the expectation value of x squared, it would be a little bit further away from zero now because more of the particle is centered away from the minimum of the well. That little bit of energy is starting to push the particle up out of that minimum a little bit. And these are oscillating back and forth now because the energy has gone from one half h nu, one half Planck's constant times the vibrational frequency, to three halves h nu. And moving to <clears throat> n equals three, add in another zero here. Now we have three peaks. <clears throat> You'll notice that the outer two are bigger than the middle one. And that's because as we get more and more of these peaks, they're going to get bigger and bigger on the outside and smaller in the center. And this is because this has a Hermite polynomial, which is second order. It's quadratic. So multiplying a Gaussian times a quadratic function gives you this type of shape. So the particle is getting higher up and getting spaced further away from the center of the well again. And notice again that the oscillations in time are going back and forth faster now at the higher energy. Going to n equals 3, the fourth state. <clears throat> we have four peaks, again, exaggerating this trend of larger peaks on the outside, smaller peaks in the middle. And these are still getting faster yet. The particle is moving even further away from the bottom of the well. That's in an, that initial part takes some time to load, but this is the, this is the speed it w should be playing at now. And the last one we'll look at, just to really clarify that trend, is n equals 4, the fifth eigenfunction. And you do see these peaks on the outside definitely getting bigger than these peaks in the middle. The particle's spending more and more of its time further away from the well. And once these load, you'll see them really get going quite fast, quite high energy. Things are going back and forth very quickly. OK, so those are all the stationary states. If we do the same type of thing we did with particle in a box for those time dependent wave functions, let's give it n equals 0 and n equals 1 coefficients of square root of 1 half. So the particle is half in psi 1, half in psi 2. 
And now we do see this density oscillate over time. This linear combination has given us a particle which moves back and forth from the left and then to the right. And so if we calculate an expectation value of momentum here, we would get some non-zero value because the particle is moving, its density is moving back and forth to the right. And you can kind of see the real and imaginary parts pushing each other back and forth across this uh, throughout, the, throughout the wave function's uh, trajectory and time. And then lastly, kind of crazy, if we look at something like square root of 4 twelfths for n equals 0, 3 twelfths for n equals 1, 2 twelfths for n equals 2, and 1 twelfth for n equals 3. Okay, so dominant coefficients in the lower states getting smaller and smaller as we go up. What can this do? Well, this is a particle which is pretty much traveling back and forth from left to right pretty smoothly across across the the well here. So this is this is how you would get a particle with a lot of motion, as we saw in uh, the postulates of quantum mechanics. You can we can represent any function we want by a linear combination of these eigenfunctions of these wave functions from the, from the Hamiltonian, which are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. And we just have to pick the right coefficients, and we can get any kind of behavior we want, including this type of fairly smooth oscillation there. You see the real and imaginary parts trailing behind each other, acting together to produce that probability density. Then um, also of note, what we can do, just if we do in the n equals 1 state, that was if we had a spring constant of 10. What happens if we have a spring constant of 100? Now you see the parabola is much more much more contracted. The particle density is much more uh, pushed towards the middle because that potential is restraining it much more to be in the middle and it's giving it a higher energy as a result. Similarly, if we make it very, very small, we'll see that the particle gets very, very far spread out in space and not very, not very restrained since this spring constant isn't restraining it to be uh, really anywhere in space there. And let's just put that back to our default 10. So that was something that looked like this where we had the, the potential ending at these points here. We can also look, if we change the mass, what happens? If we make the particle lighter, give it a smaller reduced mass. Notice the potential is the same now, but the particle being lighter is much more spread out because the frequency of its oscillation is now higher, so it has higher energy and it's, get, it's getting uh, pushed to a higher energy because of that, of that smaller reduced mass. And similarly, if we make it very heavy, it's going to get very concentrated towards the center of the well and have very low energy, because as it gets heavier, the quantization of its energy decreases, and it can exist more and more towards the bottom of the well until in the limit of very, very large mass, it can exist entirely at the bottom of the well and basically just be a spike down there, as it could be classically. All right, so that's a good intro to harmonic oscillator wave functions, and we'll look some more of those at the properties of those wave functions and Hermite polynomials in videos to come.